Cool. All right, team. Thank you, microbes, for your patience. I know I had to get a lot of other people started off because everyone's doing different things, but that's good. All right, just to recap last lesson, um, we did vocab detective, and what I was hoping for you guys to realize from this is that uh, group one was talking about pathogens, group two was talking about diseases. So like I said, uh, the next couple lessons that I'm going to give you, I reckon there might be two to three more depending on how we go for time and how you guys are feeling with information load, um, is I want to do some clarifications because I noticed some common mistakes on your internals. Yeah? Oh, yeah, don't worry. This is online already. Okay. Um, so one of the common mistakes I saw for a handful of uh, reports is that people misunderstood pathogen versus disease, and I saw reports on disease, not on pathogens. Yeah. Um, so just, oh, Sarah, <laughs> you guys might need to move into another room. Sarah, you guys might need to move another room if you're ready to talk. Yeah, I just, Michael, I don't want to talk over you. Here, I'll open up the breakout place. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't move while I'm talking. Please stop rooting and then. All right. And then close the door. Tyson, close the door behind you. All right. Uh, ladies, take off the, off the headphones. I'm giving notes now. I'm giving notes now. <laughs> you want these clarifications because there have been there were a lot of mistakes in this internal. Okay? Pause music? Okay. All right. Fletcher, you paused your music. I see a headphone in. Just making sure. Okay. Pilika. Yeah, or pull one off your ear or something. Okay, cool. All right, sorry, refocus. Okay, so like I said, I wanna do some clarifications because I noticed some common mistakes, so I wanna clarify things. One of the things I saw a handful of is that people wrote about the disease and not the pathogen. Remember, this internal is all about the pathogen because we're talking about the life processes of that pathogen um, and things like that. So just keep that in mind, double check you have the right thing. I think I've already commented and given that feedback. All right. Now, I have a list of things that I do want to talk to you guys about. So just going to show you guys the list so you guys are aware. Um, like I said, I think this might be about three lessons worth. We'll see how we go. Um, so I want to talk about viruses today and some of the merit requirements. There's another merit requirement and an excellence requirement. Plus, I want to give you guys an example using cancer. Um, so you guys obviously can't write about cancer for your pathogen because it's not a pathogen. But I can use a lot of the context of cancer to kind of show you guys what your report's supposed to look like. So, um, yeah. That's what my plan is for today. So first thing I want to talk about are viruses. So I just want to grab these two images here because these two are about my viral replication. And I will glue these on the piece of paper as well because I want to be able to write some notes around it. Just trying to think where I want to glue it first. Might do this one first, that one first. Okay. Um, I might start writing before I start gluing. Sorry for those that have started gluing. You've got to move it. Uh, there. Okay. So, the tricky thing about this, if you have chosen a virus for your pathogen, is that viruses are not living. So viruses are not living. That makes it kind of tricky for this assessment. Now you can still do this one for your assessment because they do, even though they don't meet all the requirements for life, they do carry out some life processes. So when we think about Mrs. C. Gren, uh, Viruses, they don't move. Viruses, they don't, that one's gonna be respire. And they don't do respiration, I should say. Viruses, I would say are sensitive, but it's not sensitive to the same level of other organisms. 
Uh, viruses don't have cells. Viruses do not grow. Viruses do reproduce. Uh, viruses don't excrete waste and <sighs> nutrition. It's kind of like a maybe. So I feel like this is like a maybe I'll take it off. Um, and the reason why I say like maybe is cause like it does need things in order to carry out its replication. So it's kind of a mixed bag, that guy. Are we okay so far? Yes, no. Okay. All right, I'm going to glue my first bit in because I want to talk about the simpler one first, and then I'll talk about the more complicated one. So this is viral replication. So, so like I said, viruses are not living, but we can still use this for our report because it does do features of living things. So that's why you are allowed to still write it up. The main one that probably people are going to be writing about if they have chosen a virus is going to be the replication, also AKA the reproduction. That's most likely what you guys are going to be writing about. All right. Now, something to keep in mind about viruses is that they do not have the resources to reproduce on their own. So our resources to reproduce on their own. Now, since they do not have the resources to uh, reproduce on their own, they need to hijack. And I do use the word hijack specifically because it is what it's doing. They need to hijack a cell and take over it. So they need to hijack a cell. Therefore, needs to hijack a cell. All right, keep going. Okay. So since they need to hide, the reason why they need to hijack the cell is because what they particularly want in that cell are things like their proteins. They need their enzymes. So either DNA or RNA replication, depending on which one we have. So viruses are literally just a protein coating with some DNA inside it. And maybe some protein for like an RNA transcriptase or something like that. They're really, really basic. So it's crazy that these things that are so basic cause so many problems. And that is why they are specifically targeting cells because they don't have any of these resources. They don't have any of these mechanisms. Are we okay with that so far? All right. So this is an example. I'm sorry these pictures are tiny. I wanted to try to fit all of them in, but I figured they're pretty much okay to kind of get the idea. So this one is a bacterial, uh, bacterial virus. Um, I'll show you guys another one as well because there's two different ways these viruses operate. But basically, the virus needs to attach to a very specific type of cell. It's got a target. And remember, it's going to target with receptors. So it's going to have a specific lock and key so it knows exactly which cell they are hitting. 
they, it's really, really like specific which one they want. When they do that, they then insert their DNA, they hijack the cell, and all the cell does from that point onward is make more virus. It does nothing else. So all the other cellular functions that the cell needs to do to survive stops because it's only making virus. Eventually, so this is some type of viruses, what will happen is the cell will become overloaded and packed up with lots and lots of virus, and then the cell will explode, releasing more viral particles. Remember, when it explodes, it kills the cell. and spreads more viral particles. Particles, sorry, not spelling it right. And then this here, remember it's talking about um, the cell stops working and it only makes viruses. Yeah. So you see how that's really problematic when you get a viral infection. And let me find the other one. Get this guy. I'm going to glue the next one down. All right. Can I move it? Good. Move it. All right. Here's the next image. Just making sure you have the right way around. Okay, this one is more similar to what we get with our human viruses. Um, so HIV does this. Um, I'm not sure what else does this, but HIV definitely does this. Um, <laughs> I can tell whoever's doing HIV is like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, let me listen closely. All right, so this is, again, another virus. Different shape. Now, this one here is a membrane-based virus, and I'll show you what I mean by membrane-based one. So this guy, again, has those receptors, fits like a lock and key, finds the right cell. So depending on the virus, it'll target different cells. So it might be targeting the lungs. Uh, it might be targeting the immune system, the T cells. Um, can't remember what other ones. You guys will do the research. But you can see here that it's showing you a receptor and the lock and key that's finding it. So it's a very specific target. Now, in this case, instead of the virus just inserting its DNA, it actually fuses with the membrane and then releases its viral particles. Um, in this case here, so I'll write that note, fuses with membrane. In particular, HIV does this one. So what happens is it fuses, it releases its RNA in this case, because there's RNA and DNA. So be mindful, DNA is the double-stranded stuff, which is what we have. And then because it's obviously a lot, we then, uh, I can't remember if it's transcribe or transcript. Um, huh? Can't remember either? That's fine. It takes the DNA code and it makes RNA. RNA is stringle standard. And the nice thing about RNA is that we use that to then make our proteins. Okay? Is that okay? Or do you want to see an image of that? No? Okay. So, yes? No? Okay. So, this is a viral, um, sorry, this is an RNA virus. It makes RNA. It then reverse transcribes it into DNA, and then it takes that DNA and actually inserts it into our DNA. So that's kind of freaky that it does that. And then it starts the process in reverse. It goes back and, oh, it transcribes it, or sorry, transcripts it back to RNA and then making more virus. Okay? So this one here, some of the viruses you guys are going to be looking at are going to be inserting their DNA into our DNA, which is crazy. This tends to be a longer, quieter infection because they are more hidden. 
And then what it does is it hijacks the cell, does the exact same thing, only make virus, only make virus, only make virus, don't do anything else. And in this case, instead of the cell exploding, and releasing the virus, it actually pinches off from the membrane and then continues to float. I can't spell pinch. Pinches off membrane to continue infection. So again, that's really crazy that something that's not living is just automatically doing this. So it has like some sense of like survival skill, even though it's not actually alive. Which I think is nuts. Are we good so far? All right, questions, concerns, or comments? Are we good? How long have I been talking? 16 minutes. All right, um, cool. So, I want to show you guys the flu data, just to kind of give you guys some context about what we're looking for when it comes to data. So, I'm just trying to find the flu one. Here we go. Okay, this flu one. You want this one? Yes. Okay. Get another color. All right. So remember, data is something that I want you guys to include in your assessment, or not I want, you need to, because it's part of the requirements. Um, I'm very mindful that some of you guys might struggle to find cer uh, certain bits and pieces of data. Uh, so you can do general data. You don't have to have it specific to your pathogen. You could have like the general bacteria growth cycle or general viral sort of stuff. Be mindful of things that is data versus diagrams. So the stuff that I just showed you, this stuff is uh, diagrams. This is not data. This is data. So, um, something that I've taken for this data, just to kind of show you guys uh, some other things, is this is from the US, and it's talking about the flu uh, infection rates. So this is talking about uh, March 2020, so this bit here, looking at the uh, test for influenza and who tested positive. So we have 2008 data, 2009 data, sorry, 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. Now, Notice how there's going to be these spikes here and here, and they're happening like at the end of 2028 towards the beginning of 2029, and then it teeters off, and then the same thing. End of 2029, and then it teeters back down at the um, beginning of 2020. So this is from the US. What does that give you a hint about when it comes to the flu season? I'll ask you guys again. What? Oh, Tenzin has an answer. Are you not done yet? No, this one? What bit? Here? Yeah. Okay. All right, while you guys are looking at that note, what is happening at the end of a year and the beginning of a new year that's resulting in the flu rates skyrocketing in the United States? Cold season? Cold season, yes. So what? why do we have more colds in that cold season? Because it's cold. Yeah, it's winter. Yeah, it's the, it's the cold season because you get colds and flus. It is winter. Can I move this now? Okay. So this point here, this point here, we are talking about winter. Ooh. So we know that colds and flus are far more common in winter. Does that mean that the virus likes colder temperatures? Not exactly. It's not related to the temperature itself that helps the virus survive. It's related to something else. So what happens in the wintertime? 
Mm-hmm. It's cold. Do you spend more time indoors or outdoors? Indoors. How is that going to influence then viral spread? Increase it. So in the winter, you spend more time indoors. So you're surrounded by more people. And less ventilation. Ventilation. So remember how we talked about the Mississippi Grand? Can viruses move on their own? No. So they need their hosts to be nearby each other. So viruses can't move. So they need their hosts near each other. to spread, which is what happens in winter. Does that make sense as a loop? I'll leave that up for a second because I can still see you guys are writing and then I'll give you the next point. Anyone that's doing a virus right now is like, yes, thank you, miss. I'm so glad you're talking about this. Helps me understand what I've been reading. I should have done this earlier in hindsight, but it's my first time teaching it, so it's all good. I'm new. Yeah. All right, keep going. Okay. Nope. <laughs> Pull that up so you get. Oh, you can't see that because of my. No miss. No miss. It. Not ready. Yeah, that's fine. You see this when you guys are just relaxing in your face. You're like, it makes more sense now. Okay. I should have realized a lot of you guys picked viruses and I needed to give you notes on viruses. All right, can I move it now? Okay. All right. Now, you see how it has suddenly dropped super, super, super low. So even though we have another year, we don't have the same spike that we saw again. Why? Hmm? No idea? 2020. We're talking about the 2020 data. Why all of a sudden did our flu rates drop? COVID. So this is the COVID year. What happened during COVID? We were inside more because we were all isolating, but what did we do? We were wearing masks. Yeah, we were doing social distancing and we were in our bubbles and things like that. So did, what did that do to the virus? It couldn't spread because it wasn't giving that opportunity. All right. So COVID happened and we were doing measures like masks, social distancing. And isolating. So you're seeing fewer people. And since we were doing that, less chances for the virus to basically be from host to host and move. So this made it more difficult for the virus to move. Since hosts weren't near each other. Okay. 
Sorry, I squished that. That wasn't as ideal as I'd want. Right. I'm mindful that we have just over 20 minutes left. There is the next section is talking about one of the merit criteria, the factor in the life processes. Um, I think I'm going to hold off and do that next lesson because I don't want to overload you with information. Um, so I'm happy that once you get the notes down, you can have the next 20 minutes uh, to kind of clean up and do some work on your assessments. Does that sound good? Is that all? You can still do some research. Or you can work on another assignment. That's fine, too. This is particularly good for the people that have done viruses as their pathogen. If you haven't done viruses as your pathogen, just, these notes aren't too helpful. It's interesting, though. Yes. I know the word for the reverse stream, the transcript tense. Okay, yeah. I not remember the words. So long ago when I learned this stuff, and I'm not a biology teacher. If I was a biology teacher, it would be in my brain because you actually do need to know it. All right. Are we good? Can I move it? Okay. I'm going to stop the recording. Are there any other questions, though? No? All right. Um, so, yeah, you have 20 minutes. Uh, feel free to work on another class assignment or work on this microbes one now that you have a little bit more detail. Okay? I also put feedback online. If you haven't given me your microbes assessment, can you please give it to me now so I can just give you some feedback for now? Because I'm mindful over the next week, I want you guys to have some class time just to polish it up. So if I haven't seen something, please send it to me. I think.